Hey guys, see this net? You're going to want to stay tuned for today's show, Lake Leelano Walleye in the Fall. Stay tuned, an awesome episode with a couple of good friends. Stay tuned. Felt that tick like a block in my finger. Good one, huh? Oh yeah. Don't know what it is, but he hit it like a train. Nice. Good one. Yeah. Look at the way he hit that strike king swing bet, swim bait. Chucking it right behind us at a reed bed. And I mean, I felt that tick right in the finger. Fishing it like a bass. Basically just stop reeling. So not jigging it with my rod tip, just just real hard stop. Kill it, line goes slack, go back to hard reel. That's a really good smallmouth presentation. It also works well for walleye. Fish number one. Right here, Eric. Nice. Oh yeah. Very Look nice. at where that swim bait is. Guys, you wanna see what happens when fish go on the feed bag? Right down the throat. Completely had that 375. I'm using this, I'll show you. It's one of my favorite colors. It's just a, it's a green pumpkin with a pearl bottom. And I think that pearl bottom looks really natural like just a normal shad bottom with a green pumpkin top. Look at that Lake Leelanau walleye. Awesome, awesome fish. There we go. Oh, jerk bait fish. Talk to me, Brian. Yeah. Looked like he T-boned it. He did, right by the boat too. So when you're fishing these jerk baits, a lot of times people will give up on the, on the cast because they're so close to the boat. But oftentimes these fish will just follow you right back to the boat and you just give it a couple of twitches, just kind of like a musky, and they'll hit it right at the end there. So, with this live scope, we got it mounted on the shaft of the Garmin Force here. But what you're looking for is that was like freaking slow. Right there, a that's a fish. Now, what we want to do, we can cast right at that fish. We know it's 35 feet out, and it's about eight foot down. So you want to get that fish as bright as possible and then you can cast at it. And you can see this so well you can actually see your jig falling right by that fish. So you can see his jig right there. He's just behind that fish. So he's going to work right to it. See if that fish will chase that. And if you can get that fish to chase it, chances are it's going to bite it. So you see the fish, you catch the fish. What do you go out there for? Well, he's a blue looking fish. Yeah, they are. This one here. Little short. But little short, but he was hungry. I love the way they're hitting him, Brian. Yeah. Nice fish. Sucker in the bite. <laughs> nice fish. You need the net? Nope, because he ate it. <laughs> there you go. Nice fish, John. What I did with that one, and again, you can see the way they're eating it. Another nice fish, you know, 15 to 18 inch fish. What I did was I was reeling and killing, but then rather than just go right back to a burn reel, I was quarter cranking quick, just quarter cranking quick, which makes it go doom, doom, doom on the bottom because I had just missed one 
that didn't get it all and I thought I'm gonna slow down a little bit on, on that upgrade, produce dividends, he came and whacked it. Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Angler Quest, built with purpose. Trax Tech, the ultimate fishing system. Strike King, tie one on. Garmin. We all want to keep moving, and we all need fuel to do it. Now, with the revolutionary Flow Fast system, you can fuel up and keep moving from literally anywhere. Flow Fast will pump or siphon an amazing eight gallons per minute so you can get back to what you do best. To find out more about Flow Fast, go to flowfast.com. Flow Fast, fuel up, keep moving. Hey, down. Walleye. Got the net, Eric? Yeah. I don't think I'll need it because this thing ate it. It looked I, like it. I felt the tick like a million feet from the boat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, bud. <laughs> nice. Look at the way this fish, these fish are eating that from the side, from the mouth. Gone. So, guys, when you're fishing a swim bait, one of the most important things to remember is not just chuck it and reel it consistently. I'm casting it out. I'm letting it sink all the way to the bottom. I'm burl burn reeling three or four cranks, and I'm killing it, letting it sink till my line goes slack again. Same thing over and over. A lot of times when you come back, they'll hit the second you start into your reel or when you stop your reel and it's falling, and that's when I felt this one. It's just like a tick right in the palm of your hand. Now, I've got a 10-pound fluorocarbon leader, just contra fluorocarbon, and I've got 15-pound contra braid on, and it's super important that you have that braid on uh, because you won't feel that bite 40, 50 feet out nearly as good if you're using 100% fluorocarbon. You want all braid, maybe a four or five foot fluorocarbon leader. That'll help you transmit the bite a lot better. You'll catch a lot more fish. Holy cow, that one hit me like a freight train. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a very nice wow fish there, John. I literally paused that, guys, and let it lay on the bottom. Look at where this swim bait is. I mean, guys, that thing is gone. That is a beautiful fish. Look at that in the sunlight up here in Traverse City. Guys, you got to expand yourselves. You can't just fish walleyes the way you think. This is literally bass fishing for walleyes. And that is right in the roof of the mouth. Look at that one right there, guys. Awesome fish. This is just a standard bass casting rig from Strike King. Now that's an eight ounce squadron jig head. It's kind of heavy, that's okay. The thing I like about these heavy jigs, this one here, is there's no bend, meaning there's no give when you go to set the hook, there's zero bend that'll change that angle. And so it really rams it home. This is a 375 and you see what I'm talking about with the pearl as I turn it to the olive green or the green pumpkin. That pearl really is a realistic looking belly color. And again, a lot of cadence change. I, I can't even explain why I do what I do. I just do a bunch of different stuff. That one, I literally paused it and just sat there for a couple of seconds. And I mean, that fish came and hit that off the bottom and turned and that's how I felt it. So guys, I just cast it out and I'm letting it sink to the bottom. And this is what I'm talking about. I firm up till my rod tip bends and then I'm burn reel, kill, burn reel, kill, sometimes quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, burn reel, kill, half reel, just all kinds of different things. Tony DiFilippo, Scott Cormier, guys that have been on my show before have taught me this presentation because what it does is it's different than lifting your rod tip. The lifting your rod tip brings the bait off the bottom. Where is this? Where is this? I had one biting me right there drags it in intermittent different speeds on the bottom. It doesn't lift it because you're not pulling your rod tip up. I'm staying flat to the water. I'm ready to sweep set. If 
but I'm just changing there. cadences by doing different funky things with my reeling. Always remembering to stop completely, and they call kill it, stopping it completely for two or three seconds and then going back to different stuff. Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Polarcraft, the toughest built aluminum boats, bar none. Dreamweaver, home of the revolutionary spin doctor. Lose, feel the difference. Wave Pro, best ride on the water. Wave Pro high performance boat pedestals eliminate bottoming out and back jarring impacts. Now available the 2.0 version and slider seat hubs. The best in air shock technology provides a controlled return to keep you on your seat. Fast and easy to install with permanent mounts or movable hubs for quick and easy seat placement in 10 to 16 inch models. Wave Pro, high performance boat pedestals, best ride on the water. Online at waveproshock.com. Yeah, that's a good one. Good one, all right. Yeah, there's something behind us for sure, Brian. I was casting with the wind there. And oh, that's a nice walleye. Yeah. Nice one. Beautiful, Bri. I mean, that's a case of getting to the structure, right, Bri? Correct, yep. I just ran that jerk bait right over the top of a little hump, and he just, that's where they were sitting there. What? All right, Derek. Oh, yeah. Nice walleye. Nice walleye. All right, Derek. Guide fish. That's a beauty. Awesome fish. Take it from you. That's what you can get right there. Lake Leland, huh? Derek Thanks. strikes. Awesome fish. Good job, Derek. Jeez, did he hit this. This that is a big. has got fish on it, huh? This is a good one. So you know, I don't even know what it is. It might be a big northern. Because it's not moving at all. Oh, that's a dandy, walleye. John. It's a big walleye. Big walleye. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yes. buddy. Tournament <laughs> grade right there. Look at this. We'll show you, do they like swim baits? Find the swim bait. Right there it is. What do you know? A 375 in the roof of the mouth. That, that Brian is a better than average Lake Leland. Yeah. I'm telling you what, guys, when you fish swim baits like that, you can expect fish like that right there. Lake Leland on Traverse City, early October. We got the gang behind me, Eric, Brian up front, Derek up front, bunch of good guys having a great time. Hunting's not the only thing you can do in October. Beautiful. Let them go, Bry? Let's let them go. This is a spawner, guys, so we're not gonna keep them. Look at that beautiful fish in the sunlight. Thanks, buddy. Boom. <laughs> what a flipping bite. So today we're out here in some pretty blustery weather, basically 20 to 30 mile an hour winds all day today. And this polar craft equipped with the Garmin Live Scope and a Garmin Force Trolling Motor does a phenomenal job of not only handling control of the boat so that we're able to fish accurately and make casts, but it also, the Live Scope gives the two guys in the front of the boat the ability to see fish and make pinpoint cast two fish out in front of the boat. Now, Eric and I have basically swim bait fished from the back of the boat today. And that's what's really nice about having this system where you've got two back corners and you got a couple of guys in the front. You can fish four guys very effectively, even in a casting circumstance out of a 20 foot boat like this Kodiak 200 by Polar Craft. 
That's what we're marking down there, Derek. Those yeah. are beautiful. Yeah, he was Look at numerous that times. perch. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it hit a 375. Wow. It's dandy. That's a dandy perch. Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Offshore Tackle Products. Flowfast, world's leading portable fluid transfer system. Drato, catch and release boat system. Make loading and unloading your boat easy with the Dorado Catch and Release Automatic Boat Latch. Load with ease, simply drive on the trailer and the Dorado will automatically latch to your bow eye. A hard plastic liner protects your boat. For launching, back your boat in, pull the release lever and away you go. For roller or bunk trailers, the Dorado is quick and easy to install and works with most V-Hull boats. Spend less time at the landing and more time fishing. The Dorado Catch and Release Automatic Boat Latch, online at doradoproducts.com. No, a big smallie. Oh, yeah. Get <laughs> <laughs> out for us. Novice nutter. Brian playing center field. <laughs> They're, uh, hey, I told you about that 1130 bite. It's yeah, 1121. That's an awesome, awesome smallie. Beautiful. So basically we're used all day long today. The Rage Swimmer in the 375 size here in the fold was really, really a key. We did throw some smaller ones early, but they were not productive. So we threw those Rage Swimmers on just a custom black speed stick series. This is just a utility combo rod series that I really, really enjoy. It's a TLC B30, so it's a 30 size reel, spooled up with some Contra braid. This is 15 pound test braid. I'm going to a 15 pound test leader. And as you can see, I'm just using a basic squadron jig head. Now the color today that seemed to be really, really important was um, the uh, green top pearl bottom now this pearl is really subtle it's almost got a little bit of green in it it's not really white and pronounced and I think that that uh, that green to pearl combination was really triggering a lot of bites today now we would fish it with a real augmented cadence so we'd cast it out let it sink all the way to the bottom and then we would burn reel a couple cranks and then we would really really stagger our cadences back really making it look like it was just jumping along the bottom and that was triggering those bottom dwelling walleye and today brian made the comment that in days past when he's been up here guiding he's seen a lot of suspended fish doing really well on a jerk bait the jerk bait caught only a couple two three fish today all the rest of the fish were caught on the swim bait and it's because we saw those fish pegged to the bottom and so that bottom presentation was really key so when you're putting together a combo this is probably my most used rod and reel for both walleye bass and northern all year long i'll give you the model number of this so you guys know it's a tlc b3070 medium fast so that's a 3070 medium fast it's a seven foot medium action with a very fast tip i absolutely love this for being able to really transmit the bites. It's very stiff in the midsection, but when you get up to the front, she gets very, very limber, and that allows me to really read what's happening with my bait, whether it's ticking over clam beds or doing other things. It's very, very important. You have a supple tip, but a very stout back because you wanna ram that big heavy hook home when you're using these squadron jig heads. Try one of these combos today and these colors in the 375. If you're a smallmouth and walleye fisherman in Northern Michigan, you're gonna love that combination. So, you know, the Traverse City region is really one of the most diverse fishing regions anywhere in the Great Lakes. Today, we're here catching, you know, walleye and smallmouth bass in October, but this fishery really never shuts down year round. Now the ice fishing season to start the year can be a little bit iffy, so I'd ex exercise a little bit of caution and call ahead to knowledgeable people that know ice conditions. 
But once the season starts, usually late March to early April, it usually starts with Cisco's, a big run of Cisco's up in the bay, along with lake trout that opens on April 1. Now that fishery is typically now a combination of vertical jigging those fish or trolling with downriggers traditionally. Uh, a lot of people have gone to the jigging because it's so much more uh, friendly to the fish. You fight them in slow and that way you're able to release them no matter what depth you catch them at. Now the smallmouth bass fishery in the uh, Traverse City region is absolutely prolific. Whether you're fishing big lakes like Crystal or Flat down in the Frankfurt Benzie area, or whether you're fishing Green or or uh, uh, Lelana in the spring, or the main bays East and West Bay, smallmouth fishing is out of bounds here in the Traverse City region. Now, so when you transition into summer fishing, it's basically lake trout fishing and uh, bass fishing in deeper water with drop shots typically. And it also offers really, really good salmon fishing later in the summer, like in August. So fall is one of my favorite times when you come up to the Traverse City region. It offers, again, walleye fishing in a lot of the inland lakes, big smallmouth bass fishing in a lot of the inland lakes, also an awesome perch fishery uh, up there in the Sutton's Bay and also in West Bay at times. It just depends on where the fish are at, but I'll tell you what, if you're looking for an awesome place to come that's got great food, great activities to do, lots of entertainment, a vibrant downtown, as well as some out of bounds fishing, the Traverse City region is the place to go. Well guys, awesome bag of Lake Leland all walleye, one jumbo perch, a few smallmouth. Thanks to Derek from Freedom Charters, Brian Bice, my buddy from To Be Caught Charters. If you're looking for great fishing and a great charter experience, call Brian. If you're looking for awesome fishing in Northwest Michigan, Lake Leland on the Traverse City region is there. Thanks to my back of the boat buddy, Eric, for winning the free lunch bet. We'll see you next week on Fisherman's Digest. Closed captioning is brought to you by WavePro. Best ride on the water. Online at waveproshock.com.